this ratio of one to one to one where you're setting your baseline macros. The whole process of setting starting here is how do I respond? How does my body respond to that much protein? Is it enough? Is it not enough? How does my body respond to that much fat? Is it enough? Is it not enough? And then you can make adjustments from there. Hey there, I wanted to let you know about my latest book, Body Confident, that's coming out in September 2024. Call it a critical thinking guide to your health journey because it is a framework, a guide, a blueprint that's going to help you understand and be able to filter all the information that's out there on the internet that you're getting from social media, YouTube, go to bodyconfidentbook.com, sign up for updates. The book comes out in September. Hey, what's going on guys? Real quick, I wanted to respond to a question that I got from Vanessa Spina, ketogenic girl. Uh, I did a podcast with her a while ago, probably early 2023 or late 2022. I don't remember exactly when. It's been a while. It was probably mid to early 2023 because it was after my study, that the case study that we published uh, in September 2022. So um, she sent me a message today. And I thought it was really good to respond through video and put it on my page as well. So that, because it's a question I get all the time. I talk a lot about separating your ratios and, and not using how much carbs you have or how much fat you have or how much protein you have in relation to each other to determine what your macros are. We talk about making sure you're getting enough protein, making sure you're getting enough fat, making sure you're not over consuming carbs, whatever that may be for you. Um, on her podcast, we talked about setting your macros and figuring out what you should do. And I talked about my ratio or my uh, formula and ratio that I use for how much of each of those. And this is where some of the word play and things like that, we want to make sure are very clear. And that's the question that we got from one of our listeners today. She sent me a message and said, hey, can you clarify the method Bronson Dant used? Uh, talked about in your most recent podcast for calculating protein, fat, and carbs. I think I understood the protein part, but got confused with the fats and carb calculations that he was suggesting. Let's go through this real quick, step by step. Okay. So first of all, when we're talking about making sure you're getting enough protein and fat, those are separate. So understand that they're individual. Your body needs a certain amount of fat. Your body needs a certain amount of protein. If I lower my fat, that does not mean I have to increase my protein. If I lower my protein, that does not mean I have to increase my fat. Okay. You want to find what we call your thresholds for each of them, macro thresholds. What's your maximum amount of protein that you can use, that your body can utilize effectively before it's too much? Most people don't need to eat as much protein as they think they do. When they start eating, I see women eating 225, 250 grams of protein. You don't need that much protein, okay? 1.2 to 1.25 grams of protein per pound of lean mass is probably a good place to be at the most, at the upper end, all right? When we talk about fat, one gram of fat per pound of lean mass is a good place to be as a general rule of thumb, okay? Now, how do we combine fat and carbs? Let's go through the whole process. So I call my process of determining macros one to one to one, okay? So it's one gram of protein or one gram of fat to one pound of lean mass. So your lean mass is all of your body weight minus your fat. So if you weigh 200 pounds and you are 25% body fat, that means you have 150 pounds of lean mass. So you should be targeting 150 grams of protein, 150 grams of fat. Okay, that's your baseline. That's the baseline. That's where you start. We're not saying that that's what you need. We're saying that's where you start and you make your adjustments from there. The whole process of setting starting here is how do I respond? How does my body respond to that much protein? Is it enough? Is it not enough? How does my body respond to that much fat? Is it enough? Is it not enough? And then you can make adjustments from there. This ratio of one to one to one, where you're setting your baseline macros. That's all we're talking about, baseline macros. You have to play around with it and make your adjustments from there. Okay. Just remember when you make your adjustments, if your protein is good, most people work fantastically at one gram of protein to one gram of uh, one pound of lean mass. Okay, most people that I work with work fantastic right in that range and they don't need to change anything. That is usually a good minimum target for most people, okay, to get to that point and stay there. Or fat, one gram of fat per pound of lean mass for some people is more than they need, for other people it's less than they need. 
So that one is the one that I see people fluctuate with and adjust more frequently and more often. Changing your fat doesn't mean you have to change your protein. They are separate numbers. They have nothing to do with each other. That's the big thing about this process you need to understand. Now, here's where the fun, the fun part gets in. When you're including carbs, okay, I just usually, for most people that I work with who are following the carnivore diet or following mostly animal meat and get 10 carbs or less per day, I don't even worry about adjusting carbs. If you're getting 10 or 15 grams of carbs a day, if you're doing low carb or keto and you're getting 25, 30, 50, maybe even up to 100 grams of, of carbs per day, then you need to mix that and combine that in with your fat. So if your number for fat, okay, is 150, right? You're 200 pounds, 25% body fat. So that means you have 150 pounds of lean mass. So your number, let's not say it's your fat number. Let's say it's your fuel macros. number. Because when we talk, the way we're talking about our macros here now is we're talking about protein as a functional macro, not fuel. And then we talk about fat and carbs as a fuel macro, not so much function. You don't use uh, carbs to build muscle. You don't use carbs to um, grow hair, right? That's what protein is for. You don't use carbs to create enzymes to help your body digest food and break down nutrition. That's what protein is for, okay? Fat does go into some, uh, into cell structure and fat does go into hormone production and things like that, but it is not, that is one of the things as well as being a primary source of energy production in the body, okay? Fat and carbs are primarily energy substrates, okay? For the most part, okay? We're not, nothing's, nothing's 100%. We know that it does other things, okay? Now, if we're looking at fat and carbs as primarily fuel, then we can say it's 150 pounds of, of, of lean mass, so 150 grams of fuel. So you can split that 150 grams up however you want from a macros perspective, okay? If you want to do 50 grams of carbs and 100 grams of fat, then more power to you. The only recommendation that I have is that you not go under... 70 ish grams of fat of intake per day. Most people need to intake at least 70 grams of fat per day. If you get below that, you start getting into uh, fat deficiency, your protein, the protein sources of food that you eat don't digest as well. You have issues absorbing the nutrition from the protein sources that you eat, all those types of things, right? Fat is necessary to help the sources of protein that you're eating provide the bioavailable nutrition in your body. So if you're not getting enough fat, then you're reducing the bioavailability of the nutrients that you're eating, okay? So you need to make sure you're getting enough fat. So when it comes to the fat and the carb numbers, we're talking about fuel. So just in a recap, you want to make sure you're getting, uh, to, as a baseline, when you start this process, one gram of protein or one gram of functional macros, which is protein, one gram of fuel macros, which is fat or carbs or combined, if you're going to split your carbs and your fat up, then however you want to do it, that's great. Try not to get less than 70 grams of, pro of uh, sorry, 70 grams of fat per day when you split those up between your fat and carbs. All right. Hope that answers the question. As always, guys, ask any more questions if you have. Uh, Vanessa, thank you very much for reaching out to me. This is a fantastic question. I haven't talked about this in a while. Um, if you guys want more specific information, my book on Amazon, the Ultimate Ketogenic Fitness Book. I have a whole chapter in there about setting macros, having a, a, what a whole foods ketogenic diet looks like and how to make that work for your life um, and all those types of things. So I uh, hope that helps. All right, guys, you know I am a fan of protein. You know that prioritizing protein is a key aspect to the fundamental concepts of nutrition. I highly recommend for those people who need the help in increasing their protein intake, Equip Foods Beef Isolate Protein Powder. They have a ton of different flavors, chocolate, vanilla, strawberry, salted caramel, coffee flavor. It is the cleanest and most effective protein powder that I have ever used. 